Hello and welcome to the Young Earth Pod. And today we will discuss the various sites where skeletal traction can be applied. Skeletal traction is one of the modalities of treatment for fractures involving a pendicular skeleton and can be used as a temporary or definitive procedure. Even though rarely used nowadays, it is still an important modality of treatment in selected situations where surgery may be delayed, denied or contraindicated for various reasons. Today we will discuss the various sites where skeletal traction can be applied. The indications for olecranon traction include supracondylar or distal humerus fractures. The site of pin insertion is 3 cm distal to the tip of olecranon just deep to the subcutaneous border of the proximal end of the ulna. This avoids the pin from entering the elbow joint and also the open physis in children. Since we have a better control over the entry point than the exit, the pin is inserted in medial to lateral direction at right angles to the longitudinal axis of the ulna. This avoids injury to the ulna nerve. Indications for metacarpal traction include difficult reduction of the forearm or distal radius fractures. The entry site for the pin is marked at 2.5 cm proximal to the distal end of the second metacarpal. The K wire is passed transversely across second and third metacarpals at right angles to the longitudinal axis of the radius in a medial to lateral direction or radial to ulnar direction. Indications for the greater trochanter traction include central fracture dislocation of the hip. The pin entry site is marked on the lateral surface of the femur 2.5 cm below the most prominent part of the greater trochanter, midway between anterior and posterior surfaces. A coarse threaded cancellous screw or screw eye is applied in a lateral to medial direction. Indications for distal femur traction include femoral sharp fractures and acetabular fracture. The entry site of the pin is 3 cm proximal to the lateral joint line. This corresponds to the upper limit of lateral femoral condyle. For marking the entry site on a relaxed and extended knee, draw a line posteriorly at the level of upper pole of the patella perpendicular to the long axis of femur. Draw a second line from below upwards, just anterior to the head of fibula, parallel to the long axis of femur. The point of intersection of these two lines is the site of insertion of the stainment pin. This site avoids injury to the lateral knee joint capsule, which reaches 2 cm above the knee joint and also avoids injury to distal femoral physis in children. The pin is passed in lateral to medial direction along or slightly posterior to the mid-coronal plane of the femoral shaft. Traditionally, medial to lateral direction is suggested to avoid injury to femoral artery in Hunter's Canal. The indications for proximal tibia traction include fractures of tibia, and femoral fractures from subtrochanteric region distally. The pin entry site is marked 2 cm distal and 2 cm posterior to the tibial tuberosity to avoid injury. 
to the common peroneal nerve as it courses anteriorly after winding around the fibular neck. The pin is passed in lateral to medial direction to avoid damage to the common peroneal nerve. The indications for the distal tibia traction include proximal tibia or the tibial plateau fracture. The pin entry site is marked 5 cm above the level of the ankle joint, midway between the anterior and the posterior borders of the tibial shaft. The pin is inserted in a medial to lateral direction avoiding injury to the saphenous vein. Indications for the calcaneus traction include tibial shaft fractures or the calcaneus fractures. The pin entry site is marked 4 cm inferior and 4 cm posterior to the medial malleolus. This avoids injury to the tendons and neurovascular bundle passing behind the malleoli and also avoids the pin entry into subtalar joint. The pin is inserted in a medial to lateral direction. So this was a brief idea of various sites of skeletal traction application. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments below. For more interesting content in orthopedics, please subscribe to The Young Orthopod and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We'll be back with another topic in orthopedics. See you soon.